storing data on blockchain is very expensive. So you should really think what type of variables you should use to store the data on blockchain and what should be the length of those variables. Bytes data type is one of the cheapest way to store the data on blockchain. You should always choose bytes over the string when you have to store data on blockchain. Of course, there are a few exceptions where we cannot use bytes and we have to go for a string. But that is the topic for another video where we will discuss about when we should go for bytes and when we should go for strings. For now, let's talk about bytes. There are two ways to define the bytes. First, when we already know the length of our data and second, when we don't know. So first, let's talk about when we know the length of our data. For example, I already know uh, the length of my data. For example, I can define something like bytes or name. I can set it to my name any. So this is the fixed length data types. So I already knew the length of my data and I can set it to fixed length. So I can set it to public. So we talked about this when you set the variable to public in Solidity. Solidity automatically defines the getter function for you and you can view the data. So let's deploy this contract and let's call this function name. And now my name any is stored in byte format right here. You can define these data types from byte 1 to byte 32 based on your requirement. If you want to store the data of length 32, you can define something like bytes 32 public name one i can set it to any so let's see how our data looks after storing the data in 32 so let's call name one so this is four bytes where our data is stored and this is 32 bytes you can see we have just utilized four bytes out of a 32 uh, length so that's the reason rest of the data is still blank there so if you will increase the length here to like any, 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 and something like this. So now you can notice that I have reached or have gone out of 32 bytes. So that's the reason our compiler is screaming. So we have to reduce the data length or we have to put it between 32 bytes only. So let's reduce it to something like 32 only. So I'll reduce. And now our compiler is happy. So let's deploy this contract now. And let's see. And now you can see the full length is utilized. Byte 1 to byte 32 is a fixed length array, which means you can run a loop on this uh, array to access the array elements. But you cannot modify the individual byte to modify the array. So what do I mean by that? So let's quickly declare a function. Function access and let's set it to public view and set returns to let's say byte one and here let's do return name and let's set the index to let's say three so now it should return i from the name here because the index three is i so now let's deploy this and now if i click on access so it should return i so since this is in uh, hexadecimal format so i means 69 in hex so that's the reason we are seeing this value here so you can access the individual elements but you cannot modify them so if you try to do something like this here uh, let's say name v equals to let's say i want to change from i to m I cannot do that. It won't allow you because it is a fixed length array. So we use these data types when we already know the length. But what if we don't know the length? In that case, there is another data type, bytes. And I can set it to public and set it to name to. Now I can store any length of data in this data type. So I can type in anything and you will notice our compiler will not complain now because it can take a data of any length so let's see it now let's compile and you can see 
where complete space is utilized because it has determined the length at the runtime, how much data we want to store. So you should go for bytes when you don't know the length of your data and you should go for fixed length uh, bytes when you already know how much data you want to store on your blockchain. There are a few other operations that you can run on bytes data type. So let me clean up everything from here. Bytes, public name, anyone. So basically bytes is your dynamic array. So you can run the length operation on it. You can also iterate over your bytes array and uh, you can also run the pop operation on it to remove the last element from your data so let's look at the length functionality first so declare a function set it a name bytes length set it to public view returns so set the return type to uint i'll tell why we have declared the return type uint to so do return and now do name dot length and it will return the length of our array so let's deploy and byte length and the length is nine so basically it is returning the length of our array from here we can also iterate over this array but we won't go through this video and there is another operation pop that we can just uh, do it here so let's remove this and remove this as well and do name dot pop and this will remove the last element from the array so let's deploy it again and look at the name you can see we have 16 e in the end so now let me run byte length so it should remove something from this now so you can see uh, 6 e is gone so that means something has been removed from the array so you can run these two operations length and pop but you cannot run the push operation on bytes so there are only two operations available length and pop only so that's it for this video